All right. Hi, I'm Jamie with Equilibrium Counseling Services, and I'm here today with Carrie. Uh, she's one of our staff at the Counseling Center, and I um, just wanted to introduce and have you get to know more of our staff. So we're going to be doing a monthly intro to different uh, clinicians that we have. And so here's Carrie. First victim. <laughs> hey, welcome. Um, First you want to tell us like just a couple things about you, or how long you've been with us, kind of what kind of work you do? Sure. So I am an associate marriage and family therapist, and I came on staff at Equilibrium back in February. So it's been a few months and uh, it's been a very fun ride. Uh, Jamie makes it colorful. Um, so yeah. Awesome. And you just wrote a blog, our very first blog for our website. Mm -hmm. And so what is that about? So I wanted to kind of introduce people to IFS, uh, Internal Family Systems, which is a form of therapy that I kind of specialize in. It's kind of the lens I practice from in general, because I think it resonates with a lot of people, which is what I talk about in the blog about the dynamic of kind of what it's like to, if we're just kind of going through life and we're riding this bus, and then sometimes it feels like even though we know we want to go in one direction, it's like someone else gets behind the wheel and we're kind of off. And that could look like how you interact with people or having a hard time following through on things you want to do. Why do I feel at war with myself? What creates that? And IFS has kind of an explanation that there's kind of our authentic self and in our authentic self, like we have our plans and our goals and our personality, but along the road of life, we kind of pick up passengers that are these other parts of us and they're really there, and, but they all kind of have their own experience and their own story and their own fears and needs and drives. And so when they get activated, they kind of jump in the driver's seat and that's when we find ourselves kind of in these repetitious patterns and feeling stuck maybe because I know I part of me wants to do this and yet this other part of me does this instead and I think we all relate to that feeling. Absolutely I, that so comes up for me there's so many times I'll be in conversation with clients and I'm like well part of me wants to do this like we can go the emotional route or the other part of me is like well we can go the practical route so mm -hmm. I use that but tell us more about like how the bus picks up different parts of ourselves. Sure. So our authentic self is who we are and that's our core. And that's so valuable that, especially when we're younger, we're going through difficult things that are scary or create uncertainty or we get, we get hurt. And so parts develop to protect that authentic but vulnerable core self. Mm -hmm. And that's why these parts kind of, I, I liken it to a band. If you're operating from your core self, you kind of know the whole song and you want to kind of conduct the full symphony, but each part kind of only knows one instrument and maybe only one note on that instrument. And it's the only kind of like coping skill or story or explanation they kind of understand. And so even when it fit well at whatever point that developed, if we carry that forward, that part continues to do that over and over again when it's feeling like we're back in that, in some situation that's similar to what formed it. Okay. Right? But it's maybe it doesn't fit what we're doing now. It fit then, but it doesn't fit now, but they don't know what else to do. And so rather than changing, because they don't know what else to do, they just play it louder. And then all of a sudden that thing that was helpful when we were little, or younger or had less experience or understanding. Now it's repeating, but it's not so helpful. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's where I find my clients come in with. Like, So then how do you work with that? When you are maybe at the point where you've acknowledged, I have this younger part of me that is needing to be heard or getting louder, but I'm over here as my authentic self, like hearing them. How do we then work with that or integrate that or acknowledge those parts? Sure, great question. And in our authentic selves, we kind of have all these great characteristics, creativity, calmness, connectedness, compassion, curiosity. And so when we are functioning in that, I find that people come to these parts and they hear their story and they get curious and they ask questions and they kind of realize, oh, hey, did you know that 
I now know how to do this instead of you having to do that. And it unburdens the part. It sets them free from having to repeat the same thing over and over again. Yes. And now we get to make choices instead of reactions. And I think that's what's really freeing about this work. Yes. I love that choices instead of reactions. Mm -hmm. yes. That's how I teach people to recognize when you're in part versus self. Are you getting to do the thing you want to choose or are you kind of reacting? If it's a reaction, it's led by a part. Yes. I, I share that with like um, a reaction versus a response. Yeah. The reaction yeah. is like is innate and it's automatic yeah. and a yeah. response is chosen that I right. get to decide what's right. coming next. Exactly. And I think it's very often our reactions that we kind of tend to regret yeah. or look back on and be like, oh, why did I do that again? Oh, that's not the thing. <laughs> like, that's not how I wanted to show up. Yes. And that's what I love watching my clients be able to more and more show up in their authentic self. And I also want to clarify that the parts aren't bad. None of our parts are bad. They're actually all very functional and useful and adaptive. They're for us. They're on our team. It's just that sometimes our team forgets who's coaching and they lose direction. And then we have too many coaches and no players. Mm. This is kind of helping us get everyone to kind of like play together. Because just like in a family, how you'll have members that don't necessarily get along, mm. your parts start to develop relationships with each other. And yes. so you've got parts that start to go kind of into like this war relationship with each other. Yeah, I can. And see I think that, that we, we relate to that feeling a lot too. Yes. Yes. So hearing the piece of like connecting with your authentic self at equilibrium, we really emphasize that, like even with our clinici clinicians being able to show up as a real person, not as a blank slate, What's that mean for you to show up authentically as a person, as a therapist? So I, I love this question. And this is the reason why I came to Equilibrium. This is why it fits so well for me, because I don't know how to not be me. And mm -hmm. that's the part that like, I mean, I, I had to do my own therapy. I had to do my own work. I had to learn how to lead my parts. And I just want to say any clinician that says that they're done with therapy, red flag. <laughs> Every therapist should have a therapist. You could take breaks, but you should always be active in therapy. And be ready to go back. Yeah, yes. I still am discovering parts today. Like, I mean, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's ever evolving and their, their relationships and kind of like what they need from me is ever evolving. And so that's the part that I love about being an IFS therapist is that I have to show up in my authentic self mm -hmm. or the work would feel really hollow. And I'm I'm goofy and I'm quirky and I love to use humor and I love to use analogies and I love to use whatever works for my client. Like I've, I've had to adapt this in a bunch of different ways because it has to be personal. It has to resonate. Absolutely. And I love that people can take this and make it their own. Absolutely. I love that. I, that sounds so perfect. Meeting somebody where they are, where they're showing up as what's going on and how they want to label it and using their own language. Mm -hmm. um, one more thing. Can you tell us about your um, adulting group that is coming up in the next oh. months? Yes. So <laughs> this is somewhere where my heart is very deeply because I mean, you just got real excited when we said that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, well, it was a brilliant idea. And I think there's just such an, I would have loved to have been in an adulting class <laughs> when I was at that age. Yes. I think that there's just so much pressure on us, um, especially at, like, it's like, senior year of high school you've you've made this plan and you're ready to go off to college and you feel like all your hopes are pinned on this like your future is narrowed down to the major the school the state uh like and and then you're off and you feel like it's just gonna it's just gonna take off and it's magically gonna happen and then you kind of like trip over your feet because yeah. <laughs> there's all these things that maybe we didn't really learn and pick yeah. up and adulting is Hard. If they told us in kindergarten, I think we would have all opted to stay in the coloring books. And I mean, out. like, I my inner child is very coming out. And she gets to play again because adult I, is very hard. Very and you never get to stop. And yeah. so I really think that it, at that beginning piece where we're just starting to pick it up and we're trying to sort out like, oh gosh, what does it mean to have to pay my bills? What does it mean to set a budget? A uh, budget, like, and. And I just think that this is, can be a very exciting time of life. And it I also know it's really Yes. It's figureoutable. 
figure it, it out hard, together. But there are ways to figure it out. There are resources available. There are questions to ask and nobody knows. Nobody's got it all figured out. However, no. together they might appear. Nobody has it all figured out. And we got to use it. We got to rely on each other. Yeah. And, and I also want to normalize hard. that it doesn't, it's, it's fun and it's wonderful because you get the freedom, but it also is really heavy and overwhelming because it comes with responsibility. You can't have one without the other. And there are days where you just don't want to. <laughs> and that's very real. True. Yes. Yes. So on that note about days you just don't want to, let's end with what's a self-care thing that you do when it's that day that you have to just relax and you don't want to do the adulting. Don't want to do the adulting. Yes. I actually love to color. I, I, I use that example from kindergarten because I find that I, like, I love to color and I like to blow bubbles. I love to blow bubbles as a kid. And that's how I teach my clients breathing exercises. One of them is blowing bubbles. And so I, I, I've got to practice what I preach. And I love to go in the backyard with a big old thing of bubbles and just be a kid again. Oh, I love it. That just makes me so happy. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you. We're so happy to have you on our team. Um, Everybody, if you're interested in learning more about IFS or working with Carrie or about Equilibrium and all of our resources and services, um, you can check, up, check out our website, equilibriumcs.com, um, check out her blog post and our whole team. And yeah, we're here for you. We are. So thank you, Carrie. And thanks, everybody. Have a good one.